Well, he gave three reasons. High energy costs, heavy regulation, and what he called rising sinister. Those using NVIDIA's imported chips do not qualify for these discounts. The message, again, is simple. Use Chinese, not American. Any other country in the world. In the AI space, almost 70% of patents are held by Chinese players. Incentives to large data centers. For them... Electricity costs have been cut by up to 50%. He says the United States could lose the AI race and that China is pulling ahead. But why does he think that China is winning? Why does he think the U.S. is falling behind? The CEO of OpenAI just admitted something that should terrify every investor watching the AI boom unfold. Sam Altman explicitly stated that he expects the U.S. federal government to become the insurer of last resort for artificial intelligence companies. Let that sink in for a moment. The billionaire head of one of the world's most hyped technology companies is openly saying his industry will eventually need government bailouts to survive. This isn't speculation or conspiracy theory. This is coming directly from the executives running these companies in their own words during recorded interviews. Meanwhile, Jensen Huang, CEO of NVIDIA, the most valuable corporation on earth with a market capitalization exceeding $5 trillion, is warning that China is winning the global race to develop artificial intelligence technology but here's what makes this particularly interesting. These powerful executives of massive U.S. tech corporations aren't just making neutral observations about geopolitical competition. They're strategically using the specter of Chinese competition to pressure the U.S. government into providing guarantees, subsidies, and bailouts for their companies. Big tech corporations like OpenAI and NVIDIA want explicit guarantees from the U.S. government to help them compete with China. And they're also genuinely worried that if the massive AI bubble inflating the U.S. stock market suddenly pops, their companies could potentially go under, which explains why they're desperately begging the U.S. government to bail them out preemptively. So let's examine the remarks made by NVIDIA's CEO and understand the economic context driving these pleas for government intervention. NVIDIA has become the most valuable corporation on earth by market capitalization, reaching $5 trillion as of late 2024. But if you go back just three months earlier, NVIDIA was the first ever U.S. company to reach a market cap of $4 trillion. So in just three months, another trillion dollars was added to its market capitalization. This represents a perfect example of how the U.S. stock market exists in a massive speculative bubble, driven almost entirely by hype surrounding artificial intelligence. Meanwhile, the vast majority of AI companies are not making any money whatsoever. Many of them are actively losing substantial amounts of money. In fact, a comprehensive study by scholars at MIT found that 95% of generative AI pilot programs at U.S. companies are failing to deliver promised results or generate returns on investment. One of the only companies actually making significant money is NVIDIA. And the reason is straightforward. NVIDIA is selling the shovels in the new digital gold rush. If you examine the history of the 19th century California gold rush, the vast majority of people involved in actually searching for gold did not make any money. They lost money, went into debt, and returned home empty-handed. But the people who made the most money were not those frantically trying to find gold. It was the companies selling the shovels, pickaxes, and tools needed to look for gold. NVIDIA essentially has a monopoly on the most advanced chips required for AI development. NVIDIA is selling the chips that AI companies desperately need to develop their models, which explains why NVIDIA is making enormous profits while most AI companies burn through capital, and NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, has spent considerable time and energy lobbying China trying to gain access to the Chinese market because the Chinese government doesn't want its own technology companies to become dependent on U.S. technology. China wants to challenge the monopoly that NVIDIA currently holds on advanced chip manufacturing. In fact, the Chinese government officially accused NVIDIA of violating anti-monopoly laws. This is why Beijing banned Chinese tech companies from purchasing NVIDIA chips, instead incentivizing them to buy chips from domestic Chinese companies and invest in local manufacturing and research and development. 
Now that we understand this context and recognize that NVIDIA has lost access to the massive Chinese market with 1.4 billion potential customers, we can see why Jensen Huang is fear-mongering about China and warning that China is winning the AI race. I personally think this assessment is probably accurate. China has made substantial progress in AI development, which I'll discuss later, but we should keep in mind the economic and political motivations behind the comments being made by the NVIDIA CEO in his interview with the Financial Times. Jensen Huang stated explicitly, China is going to win the AI race. But what was his actual argument? What he's really doing with this interview is pressuring the U.S. government to implement policies that benefit NVIDIA specifically. He mentioned two areas where China is supposedly leading, lower energy costs and looser regulations. The energy and electricity issue is genuinely legitimate, and I'll discuss China's electrical grid advantages shortly. And he gave three reasons. High energy costs, heavy regulation, and what he called rising cynicism. Those using NVIDIA's imported chips do not qualify for these discounts. The message, again, is simple. Use Chinese, not American. Any other country in the world. In the AI space, almost 70% of patents are held by Chinese players. Incentives to large data centers. For them... Electricity costs have been cut by up to 50 percent. But then Jensen Huang claims that supposedly China has looser regulations. Come on, his real priority here is transparently obvious. He's pressuring the U.S. government to further reduce regulations on U.S. tech companies, even though there are already remarkably few meaningful regulations. Are we truly supposed to believe that China, which has a socialist government with extensive state involvement in the economy, has fewer regulations? than the United States. The NVIDIA CEO's agenda here is completely transparent. What's actually happening is that the U.S. stock market is experiencing the biggest speculative bubble in its entire history, driven by mania surrounding artificial intelligence. No matter what metric you examine, the U.S. stock market has never been this overvalued. For instance, if you look at the price-to-earnings ratio of stocks of major U.S. companies, the average ratio is significantly higher today than it was at the peak of the dot-com bubble in 2000. An even better metric is the Buffett Indicator, which compares the market capitalization of publicly traded companies to GDP, the total output of the U.S. economy. The Buffett Indicator currently stands at over 220 percent of GDP. This is completely unprecedented in American economic history. The size of this insane bubble we're witnessing in the U.S. stock market is being driven almost entirely by AI speculation. U.S. tech corporations are genuinely afraid that the bubble may soon pop catastrophically, and they're begging the U.S. government to provide a backstop to support them and bail them out in case they get into serious financial trouble. Last week, NVIDIA crossed a big milestone. It became a $5 trillion company, the only company in the world to achieve this feat. He says the United States could lose the AI race and that China is pulling ahead. But why does he think that China is winning? Why does he think the U.S. is falling behind? This has been pretty much admitted by Sam Altman, the billionaire CEO of OpenAI. He acknowledged that the AI industry is currently in a bubble. The chief financial officer of OpenAI did an interview with the Wall Street Journal, where she openly called for a U.S. federal backstop for new investments. This was reported by the Wall Street Journal, but obviously that looked terrible in terms of public relations and marketing, and people were outraged that this large, profitable corporation was openly calling for a federal backstop. After she made those comments and the video clip went viral, the Wall Street Journal actually changed their headline and weakened it. They now say OpenAI CFO would support federal backstop rather than the original framing that suggested she was actively calling for it. Listen to her remarks and decide for yourself what she was actually saying. This is where we're looking for an ecosystem of banks, private equity, maybe even governmental, like the ways governments can come to bear, meaning like a federal subsidy, or meaning like, just first of all, the backstop, the guarantee that allows the financing to happen. Given the outrage that clip generated when it went viral across social media, CEO Sam Altman went out publicly and claimed, we're not asking for a federal backstop, we're not asking for a bailout, directly contradicting comments that he himself made in an interview with a podcast the same week.
Listen to these comments where Sam Altman very clearly says that the U.S. federal government is the insurer of last resort. He stated, At some level, when something gets sufficiently huge, whether or not they are on paper, the federal government is kind of the insurer of last resort, as we've seen in various financial crises. Given the magnitude of what I expect AI economic impact to look like, I do think the government ends up as like the insurer of last resort. Remember the concept of too big to fail from the 2008 financial crisis? When Wall Street collapsed because financial institutions and banks engaged in fraud, giving out tons of subprime mortgages to people they knew could not actually pay those mortgages, then bundling up all those mortgage loans into mortgage-backed securities and selling them to other financial institutions while credit rating agencies committed fraud by claiming these were low-risk securities. The U.S. government bailed them out, claiming they were too big to fail. Now what OpenAI is explicitly saying is that AI companies and big tech corporations in Silicon Valley are also too big to fail and need to be insured and backed up by the U.S. government. Once again, it looks absolutely terrible when executives of massive corporations are begging the government to back them up and bail them out. It makes sense that these clips went viral and people were furious. Sam Altman took to Twitter to defend the company, claiming those comments were taken out of context. He stated, We do not have or want government guarantees for OpenAI data centers. But then he revealed what they're actually asking for. One area where we have discussed loan guarantees is as part of supporting the build-out of semiconductor fabs in the U.S. So he moved the goalposts, making it seem like OpenAI isn't calling for a government bailout, when in reality, it absolutely is. If you read the letter that OpenAI sent to the U.S. government in late October, they literally call for loan guarantees from the federal government. And why do they want this financial support? Their excuse is to help counter the PRC. This is the new Cold War, and they're saying the U.S. government has to bail them out so they can fight China in the AI race and chip war. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.